Hello, welcome to Working Dragon Mystic, where we discuss real, metaphysical, and occult knowledge so that you can manifest real and tangible change in your life. This week, we're going to discuss a little bit about dragon magic and dragon altars, so stay tuned. Okay everyone, hello, I'm Drake, and today we're going to be discussing a little bit about dragon magic, but more specifically dragon altars. Um, I get a lot of questions when it comes to altars and dragon magic. Um, and it is true, you do get a lot of um, references to altars and other things in many, if not most, systems of magic. Um, now that said, many of you know I don't actually keep an active altar at any time. Um, I just keep a workspace. And because of that, I've been asked, can I have a dragon altar? Um, is there anything wrong with it? Um, do the dragons enjoy them? And because of that, I wanted to actually talk about that a little bit. Now, first off, can you have an altar? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, there's nothing wrong with setting up a place to show respect or something to an entity. Um, it's not a requirement of dragon magic. It's not. So if you're worried about that, don't worry about it. It is not a requirement in any shape, form, or the way. But it can be nice to have. It's, um, I know a lot of people like to have them because, for one, it's like you're setting aside a particular place in your home to show the dragons you care about them, to make them feel at home. And that is awesome. I totally understand that. Um, honestly, my dragons have the run of the house and they're always with us in one way or another. Um, that sticking an altar in a corner just seems, well, kind of pointless at this point. That's not to say I haven't had one. Um, I did uh, have one uh, when I first started. In fact, uh, when I started Dragon Magic, a very, very dear friend of mine actually made this for me. This was the altar cloth that I used when I first started. Um, I didn't have one and I was just going to use a black cloth but a very very dear friend of mine sewed this for me. Um, and I have kept that throughout the years. Um, it is currently folded but and you can look right here you can see well maybe the camera might not pick it up. There's plenty of wax that has been spilt on this but I've managed to keep it in good shape. Um, so you will need an altar cloth. Well, needs the wrong word. But an altar cloth is a great way to get your altar started. Because you're covering up a mundane item, whether it be a table, a nightstand, wherever you want to put this thing. And you're setting it aside real quick, real easy. Also, you can have a lot of fun with these altar cloths. Um, you can change them for the element you're focusing on. So you can have a green one when you're focused on working with earth dragons, red for fire, yellow for air, um, and blue for water. So you can actually start customizing your altar for the working you're doing, um, especially which is nice when you're doing path workings, like in the Dragon Magic 101 course where you're path working with the different elemental rulers. That would be a great time to change your altar cloth out to the ruler you're focused on for that time period. Um, so yeah, ha take this opportunity when you're setting up your altar, not just to remember the dragons, but also to show your personal creativity and have some fun with it. I know a lot of people really love their knickknacks, collectibles, and even color coordinating things. Um, truth be told, I'm not color coordinating kind of person. Um, most of my colors are well, black. That's primarily what I wear. That's primarily what I use. Um, you all have seen me with red shirts on occasionally and purple, so those more accent the black color. So I'm actually lucky the dragons use that color scheme for most of the stuff they've given me. Now, once you have your altar cloth chosen, um, you could also just go with a neutral color. Um, many of the altars I've seen go with black. And that's perfectly fine. Or red, even purples are gorgeous. Um, some people even go with greens, whatever it is that they want to set as the foundation of their altar. You can go with that. 
Next, you're going to want to try and find some representations to put on the altar if you're wanting it to be decorative. If you're just wanting an altar for dedicating to the dragons and a working area, technically you need a tabletop, that's it. But we've already got the altar cloth on there, so it's already looking pretty, which is nice. Um, a great, some people, they'll set their grimoire. I have a composition notebook here, not a grimoire. But we'll use this as a stand-in. They'll take this and just set it in the center of the altar because that has all their dragon magic working notes on it. And they're giving that knowledge, that process, and that walk along that path, a place of honor with the dragons. That works. That's totally understandable. But most people want to go the next level and they want to try and put some representations on there. Now, you go anywhere, you're going to find dragon statuary and it can get expensive. But you can also find little ones like this. This was a gift as well. Most of the stuff that's been on my altars or is in my ritual room like this is usually some gift I've been given. I don't tend to buy knickknacks for myself. Um, but I have looked this one up. This is about $4. It's not very expensive. Um, and I found it on Amazon. So this would be very affordable and it would be a great representation um, to use on your altar. Now you could get one of these for each of the rulers if you wanted. You could only have one. Um, you could even paint them. I've seen people who buy these and paint these so they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, some form of stones are always great. Um, one that I've tended to keep on my altar when I had it was this right here, which is actually a glass sphere um, with air bubbles in it. Um, and I've already I've talked to you before why I love glass over crystal most of, a lot of the time. And this little guy, um, me and it have been through a lot together and. Um, this too was actually a gift, so surprisingly. Um, so yeah, I do keep this on there. Um, originally it was just placed there as because of the color, because I needed something quick for a fire representation, but the dragons absolutely adored it, so I kept it. Um, and of course I have here another gift that's a dragon statue you can put on there. Um, this one is really nice. It was originally an oil burner because you can see where you can put the candle right here. It broke. Um, so I have used this as a um, candle holder on the altar. I will still put the tea light down here and light it and use it as a candle holder many times. But more often than not you will find it in my house now with this little orb sitting on it like that it just works out way too perfectly and looks awesome so um now i have actually at times put a led um, light down here so that it shines through this which is pretty cool and led candles are perfectly fun um another th thing you can look to other than stones and crystals though this will count as a stone anything to represent dragon eggs and this was too um i had gone somewhere with someone and they found this but they didn't want to purchase it and the clerk had only marked it down to i think 10 bucks and i hadn't bought anything all day so i figured i'd snag this little bit beauty up and throw it on my altar which i did and they even threw in this little stand for it. Um, though this stand is not good. This thing tips and tilts all the time. And I'm a little OCD so that can be bothersome. But any kind of thing like this would be another great representation that you could put on your altar to include it. Um, other than that, get creative with it. Have fun with it. Of course, candles are always great. Um, some of the most energetically charged dragon altars I've seen they're seriously just an altar cloth and two candles and just the reverence and everything that is put into it is so absolutely wonderful and the reason they do the two um, was they had one that was for the balance they balanced out both sides of the energy as we talked about last week in our 
positive and negative energy video um, to maintain that balance. Another great one that I've seen is where people will actually light three candles and they usually lay it out in a dragon's eye triangle shape so that they have one on each tip. You got the positive, the negative, or the light and the dark coming together to the balance. Great way to set up an altar, definitely. And they would put any offerings or gifts in the center of that. Um, and of course, who can forget, the dragon's eye seal would be an absolute wonderful addition to an altar. The dragon's eye seal that we have right here in the background um, where we film. Um, you can go over to WorkingDragonMystic.com. There's even a link below. In our merch, we have both a large and small canvas of the Dragon's Eye Seal that is perfect for an altar. We also have a long cloth version of it that's, well, it's the size of a beach towel that could easily be used as a traveling altar cloth that would be thrown down that already has it on there. Um, so these are great ways that you can get the Dragon's Eye Seal there. Um, also, we do have it in stickers. So you can actually get the Dragon's Eye Seal on a sticker that you could put on your grimoire here. Um, I put stickers on mine all the time, but this... I don't even know what this is, actually. Hold on. Okay, this is actually just a sketch note. It's... it's yeah, this is nothing important. But... I've slapped a coffee sticker on the front of it for some reason, but you can easily put, instead of that, if you wanted to actually decorate your actual grimoire or journal, you could do that, or any item on the um, altar itself. Um, I know some people who will actually get the stickers and they will trace it on uh, transfer paper or tracing paper and then use a wood burner to burn through that. Um, which is a great idea. I know I can't draw a circle to save my life, so that would be how I, well, that is how I did it. I actually had to make a, I wood burned a dragon's eye seal for my altar at one point, and that is pretty much exactly how I've done it. So these are just some ideals to get you started. Um, elemental representations, of course, those would be great. Um, you can have some little rocks or stones for earth. Candle for fire, easy enough. Um, your chalice can be for water, um, incense for air, those are great options. Now, one dragon magic practitioner I know has a few reptile pieces on there as draconic representations. Um, I've seen alligator feet and everything and including our alligator heads. This was another gift. Lady Peachy actually gave me this. This is not on my altar though. Um, but you can easily use things like that to represent them. Um, also, if you go to WorkingDragonMystic.com, we do have canvas artwork of all nine rulers so that if you're doing a path working with a specific ruler again, you could add that to your altar if you wanted. But to me, the altar is, more than anything, it's a chance to get creative. It's a chance to be expressive. And that's a beautiful thing. Because this is a chance to express to your friends, the dragons. Because remember, that's the big key. You're building a real and genuine friendship here. It's a way to express how much they mean to you and how much you care about them. And how glad and thankful you are for them in your life. We all express this to our friends in different ways. So the altar is an opportunity to use that creativity and to express that gratitude for that friendship. So I would definitely encourage you, if you're interested in keeping an altar, by all means do it. And hey, if you can, drop us a comment below. Share with us what you keep on your dragon altar, if you keep one. Um, perhaps you do more what I do, where you just have a workspace and you set up every time you work for whatever work you're doing. Um, that's okay too, which if y'all want, let me know and I'll do a video on just workspaces and how I manage my workspace now that I no longer keep a altar. But do share, um, drop us a comment below. Let us know what you keep on your altar, um, some of your representations, some of your creativity. 
um, those kinds of things. Um, and if you're in the Discord group, by all means, uh, drop me a picture of it. Maybe we'll do a video um, just showing off different people's dragon altars, those kinds of things. That might be a nice little montage. It would be great to see. Um, I know a lot of the altars that people share with me are absolutely gorgeous. So, hopefully this answers some of your questions and helps you, inspire you for your dragon altar. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like. It helps us out a lot. S hit the subscribe button. And make sure you turn on notifications so you're notified anytime we release a new video. Or when we go live. We go live every Friday and Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, for a live stream, we get on there, we have some fun, we talk about different metaphysical topics, answer questions. It's a good time. Great way to start and end your weekend. And until next time, everyone, I'm Drake, and this has been Working Dragon Mystic. Take it easy. Bye-bye.